Hi folks, I'm Wayne Davis. I'm up here at the Heart Institute, Texas A&M Corpus Christi with Matt and Dr. Greg, who's man in the camera. And I'm here because I'm having to re-up on some of these tags. Um, as y'all may know, we are in a tagging study with the Heart Institute. And this is what the tags look like. Here's the cards that we fill out, um, when I fill out whenever we tag a appropriate fish. And uh, I'm real happy to be part of this program, but we're tagged, what's our numbers? Uh, we've tagged uh, 52 total fish uh, just this year. Uh, about 28 of them, almost half of them been snook that Captain Wayne's been able to get for us. And uh, those are really understudied and this is gonna be some great information we get from these tags that get reported. Yeah, and we've had two recoveries. What is the percentage thus far? Uh, 7% so far. And what does is, that mean in the scientific world? Which is really great for just a market capture study and typically uh, numbers are definitely less than 5% down there too. It's, it's more typical. That's, that's, that's awesome. So we'll continue that. We're in a slow snook season right now for the flats because uh, they have moved off the flats. We're, we're certain of that now based on the results that we've uh, obtained from two captures. Yeah, 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 back in the down near the Brownsville ship channel and down near the jetties, so uh, they moved out. That's awesome. So, so, but I'm here doing the now we're shifted gears into the big trout season, and any trout over 25, 28 inches, I'm tagging those, and any other genetically gifted trout that I think necessary that we need to tag. It's just a little auxiliary benefit for what we're doing with the Heart Institute and the snook. Um, so anyway, so here's uh, some of the stuff right here. We've got the, this is our tagging stuff that we're doing for the snook, trout, and flounder. And then Matt, would you explain this acoustic tag situation that we may be able to get into? Sure, in the, in the future we can always try to uh, get some more funding for acoustic tagging. Uh, these are, this is an acoustic transmitter. Uh, it emits a unique ID in a fish and you surgically implant it into the fish's uh, belly and you put receivers out in your study area and these will monitor 24 seven for these fish that are tagged. And uh, you go download your receivers and you can monitor the whole area and look at the base scale movements. So that, hopefully next year, uh, Dr. Greg and his team can, can help get that off the ground and, and we'll certainly go there. But here at the Heart Institute, they do more than just tagging. Let's talk about the uh, otoliths over here and what that means. Sure, so um, otoliths uh, they look like this. This is from a uh, red snapper. Um, all uh, bony fish have different sized otoliths, but they're uh, used for the fish's hearing. They help the fish hear and maintain equilibrium. Um, scientists like otoliths uh, because if you section them with a uh, we have a wafering blade here. If you section these otoliths, once you put them in an epoxy mold, um, you can actually count rings like a tree and age the fish. And so you can get a lot of important information uh, like age and growth um, for these fish and look at you know population trajectories and things like that. So I guess in closing, the Heart Institute, they do a lot of things here and they've got a lot of moving parts. And uh, I guess the highlight that, that we're that we've gotten our foresight right now is the tagging of the snook and with 28 tags this year 2020 um, could have been a few more we were, we were out of tags a couple of times the boat was too far away a couple of times for us to get those tags in those big fish uh, but next year we're going to hit, hit, hit it hit it hard and hopefully we'll be able to but but i want to thank dr greg and his team and matt everyone who's involved and we'll just continue down the road with this and we'll keep you all posted on how this is going if you catch a tagged fish, um, I'm gonna let Matt explain exactly what to do. I know there's a, I, I may have said cut the tag off, but that was my fail safe way to um, make sure that we got the data off the tag, right? Instead of having to use your magnifying glass to read the phone number or the tag number, I said cut it off. If you don't have to cut it off, don't, uh, but remember the fish is important to release it alive. Go ahead and count yeah, the phone. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, if it, it's mainly you want the fish to survive if you're going to release it and if you can't get all the information off the tag uh, without you know looking at the fish and thinking that it might not survive then go ahead and just cut the tag and make it quick and release the fish healthy um, if you think the fish looks pretty good or whatever then uh, feel free to release the fish with the tag 
Uh, that way it can go around and be recaptured again and provide more movement and habitat use information. But be sure to get the, the tag number and the phone number off of the tag. Uh, and it's small, so you need some yeah. glasses. If you, I have a hard time just getting the tag number. But if you can get the tag number and the phone number, release the fish, measure the fish, document about where you caught the fish, and then release it. If you don't think you can do that or if the tag is full of moss, or it's hard to read, just snip it off, measure the sure. fish, and yeah, let it go. That, so that works. So we covered all that, and uh, this is my Wednesday up here at the Heart Institute with Dr. Greg and his team, and we'll keep you all posted on how things are going. Yeah. So, thanks.